Hey, yo, what is up, guys? It's your boy Tway here, and uh, this will be a video of World Boss 1. Now, I have the maximum stun team, and although I could be perking it up for even more stuns, I'm going to show you guys how it works. Now, I got myself Kurzy onto 2 star, and I will be showing a little bit of her perks and how she works, but let's see what makes the stun team work. So, first of all, we got Theo up in the building. And basic skills is the God of Lightning that increases for Jane by 40%. And the for Jane itself has 20% chance to inflict a 0.7 stun. So normally it makes it 60%. If you got the UT2, that actually makes it 71.5% chance to proc the for Jane with the 0.7 stun. Now going over further, you get a Sonya, and Sonya has a skill called Shock, and whenever Shock is in effect, every stun that you do has a duration increase of 0.7 seconds as stated. Now if you get a high unique weapon, then you will be able to increase the Shock duration, and with a perk you can actually increase the Shock duration as well, and with the UT, or you can actually have chances to increase the shock chance <laughs> while uh, hitting the boss while it's under shock. So if you got this maximized, you will probably have always shock onto this game. Now, she has a stun that's absolutely insane as well. The electric explosion is a 5 second stun. If you got the right perk for it, it's a 7 second stun. And with the lightning strike, you can actually get even more stuns on top of that. Now, she actually with the right gear does damage as well, which is crazy. And now we're going on to Kersey. Now, Kersey has this unique effect that... While increasing the, the duration of CC, that all allies inflict the bosses by 20%. Now, you can up this one with the right uh, unique treasure, but I was like, nah, that's actually unnecessary because she stuns herself as well. She has a knockdown, so honestly, it's not even necessary, guys. So, what it went for was maximum damage, and what her perks look like is like this. Now, one of the questions that I have would be, T5 Dark, would it be useful? But 1600 attack speed is like the maximum to get uh, your attack speed until it starts falling off. So I was like, nah, I don't really need that. So let's go with this. A funny note, the end to evil deeds, the skill, this one is actually a debuff on the boss as well. So I'm thinking that this perk deals 15% damage to bosses is actually an all round buff. So every damage source is being affected on this. Now, how Cursey works is mainly due to the S3 scale, Bloom, Crimson Flower. What it basically does, it puts like a, I would call it like a debuff on the boss and every single attack that you do afterward with Cursey will stack it up once normally. Now, if you get the perk, you will be able to stack instead of one auto attack equals one stack, would be two stacks instead. Now there's a nifty perk to this as well because if you get unique treasure three, then you can get instead of two stacks, you can get actually three stacks by 100% chance and you have an additional uh, three stacks that you can actually get. So you instead of one auto attack, one stack can one auto attack six fucking stacks that is absolutely gorgeous and if you get this up to maximum it will have a 100% chance to get the additional stacks so that lowers the chance of like fluctuating damage absolutely insane and the difference would be if you do it with one stack you would mostly get around 50 to 60 stacks if you're lucky with this build you can actually get up to 100 or 110 stacks with this current build like consistent which is absolutely insane and that will I don't know maybe 1.5 or damage which is crazy now if I really wanted to stun I would be going for the s2 that has a 0 0.5 second stun on every second on the shockwave uh, oh no it's every two seconds actually so instead of going this I went for maximum damage and that worked the best in any case now, one thing to note, I'm using an Aroxas in this team, and he is there for one reason, one reason only, and that is for my characters to survive. Now, this defense buff is absolutely insane. 
for uh, magical casters. Otherwise, my Veronica would not be able to survive. So um, without already, so let's get it popping. Um, one of the tips that I want to give you is on how to use Theo in this composition. Now, there's multiple ways to use him, but maybe what makes Theo good in this team would be Audi. Like just with Audi and his S3 resetting all of his cooldowns allows him to at least stack up his S1 more. And basically what uh, Theo's S1 does is you have a maximum of 30 stacks on every single critical hit that you do. Now, if you have obviously maximum crit, you will do 15 hits every single time. That means you got 15 hits left of doing extra stacks. So that requires you to actually uh, have the Audi reset and make sure to pop up once again to get another additional 15 stacks, which will provide you with more crit damage along the way. Aside from that fact is one of the sad notes is his MP region. Now on to T5 Dark if you hit all uh, of your 6 mana then you will be granting yourself a buff. Now one of the things to note is that even though Adi uses his S3 you get full mana. If you use a skill straight afterward the game will not always register that you have full mana. Meaning you don't get the buff which like in terms is a little bit nasty so that would mean that guess what it would be better for you to simply simply just manual theo but guess what on this team i'm a little bit lazy i don't get to do that all that often and all i want to do actually is just reset with Audi whenever the stuns actually come up because whenever I s reset with the whole team May gets her S3 which is an amazing stun Sonya gets her S3 which is a 7 second stun I can get Theo to get his S3 up uh, which would be a 3 second stun so in that manner whenever the boss gets up I just reset just a little bit before that and I can instantly stun him and put him back to his knees Alright, and for the next important key factor, onto this world boss that would be a net. And I kid you not, and to everybody that I give this tip to, for every new player, a net is probably the highest tier character to get through every content. Is she useful in world boss 2? Heck yes. Easy CC resistance straight off the bat. Is she useful in World Boss 3? Yes. Is she useful in World Boss 1? Yes. Is she useful in PvE? Yes. So she is absolutely amazing. Now, what makes her tick? And that would be her unique weapon and her unique treasure 3. And most of all, the unique treasure 3. Now, what that does is with the basic mechanic that Annette has, is whenever she gets 100 stacks, then you will get into the overcharge state. Now, all of your skills will do a little bit of a... A nifty perk but your s2 will allow you to have a no cc's anymore onto your team so cc uptime resistance and you can chain this actually because if you got yourself ut3 you can actually keep stacking over the 100 stacks and guess what the stacks on itself will actually higher up even further so in that manner with just a lousy investment of a UT and a unique weapon uh, you're actually done with a net so she is absolutely absolutely crazy now another one that is great is Veronica I would say she's a very low investment character as well I got myself an Esker with a three-star weapon and one unique treasure and he is not able to outperform my one-star unique weapon Veronica which is crazy right in terms of investment although getting a unique weapon onto an NPC hero is a little bit harder but overall consistency with Veronica is just way better aside from the fact that this lady stuns as well so that could also be one of the reasons why this team is actually working out better now we're hitting the last minute mark and this is the chance for me to die so what I'm trying to do once again is pop the Audi S1 and straight up try to stun this guy and look at the look at the stun bar just depleting and guess what if that a uh, warning thing like the ground slam would have actually hit me that would have been an instant death and now i just gotta hope and wait for silly skills to pop up 
and hope for me to survive making sure I do the S3 onto Theo get the stun done and we got another 10 seconds to pop it once again so hopefully if I save up all the mana straight away oh boy we got something <sighs> that just killed him so just imagine guys that if if they did not die I would have gotten another reset and potentially get up to 750 or maybe even 800 billion damage and guess what my Theo three star my Kersey two star that is absolutely insane absolutely insane so let's go over a little bit of the gear all right guys so this would be Theo's gear and in all honesty yes it's very good god blessing of our three star got a three star weapon two star unique treasure and uh, with the full manticore set it's absolutely gorgeous now with kersey i did not even have a manticore set but i think she is very money heavy and within this team she would need a lot of penetration on top of anything else so i would say this so far would be the best build but if i t95 her getting that 500 extra attack speed will actually help with stacking because even with the fall off i think that you can get about 25 percent extra attack speed overall now annette with a three star crown obviously does a whole lot i put all of the perks into magical damage and survivability and with audi having a mechanic onto the t2 perks with one survivability and two doing damage Switching that up is absolutely insane. Now, Veronica, her best uh, artifact would be Pocket Watch because if your cooldowns reset faster, she will stack up faster and she will actually buff faster in that manner too. So that's what I found for her to be one of the best things. I actually got a Manticore set for her that does not even allow her to survive, but I still have to change it up to uh, a T8, but I honestly don't think that it will allow her to survive even more. Narox is just being there and he can survive without any T1 perk or any T5 perk. And with that, I actually made a mistake with the Obsidian Roar Light because that would actually give me a little bit more damage and a little bit more defense that could actually be used for uh, Veronica. Because normally a caster would have like 1 to 1.5k uh, defense or 11.5 K defense and this would triple that literally so that will allow you to do a whole lot well here we got my Sonya I got a lot of attack and actually some MP region because the moment you hit more with her uh, she will actually reset the cooldowns onto her unique weapon and then the cross pumpkin head will obviously do a lot of damage and I had no other artifacts that I deemed worthy so this is probably the best perk for Sonya and you guys saw it she did amazing amazing damage alrighty that is it guys hope you guys enjoyed and uh, this was 12e peace